working on the C3. It's uh, Halloween. It's actually October 31st. Been doing a lot of work on this. Haven't necessarily been filming it, but I figured I'd show you what we've been doing so far. Um, got the uh, the C covers from Mr. Mike's. So I went ahead and installed those. Still working on the seats. Not completely satisfied with how the covers came out. Um, still going to play around with those, but again, they are a work in progress. First time I've ever done seat upholstery like this, so it is a learning process. So um, definitely like it better than the uh, the original seats, but still working on that. I'll have a uh, final video on that. One of the other things we're working on is we're working on uh, replacing the, uh, the bumper cover on the car. Because if you remember, the original cover was hit uh, at some point. It was damaged. So what we're doing is we're replacing the bumper cover with a true 80 to 82. Uh, this one actually came from Keen Parts. And I'm um, in the process of um, uh, doing some mock-up and uh, fitment on it. So we're going to do that before it goes to paint. Because you always want to do that. Um, get your fitment and any, uh, any issues that you had before paint. So uh, you won't risk any damage to the cover once you're done. So if you are thinking about going this route and replacing the bumper cover from a, like a 78 to an 82 because of the, uh, the profile on it and the spoiler, um, there are some considerations you need to be aware of before you go uh, um, down this road. And there's three things that you need to be uh, aware of. First and foremost, the, the way the taillights mount to the bumper are completely different on the 80 to 82 style as far as comparison from the 74 to 79. Um, on the 80 to 82, the, the lights actually attach the, to the bumper and then the bumper gets mounted on the car. Because if you look, uh, basically that's the uh, the mounting system for the taillights. There's actually a steel mounting plate that actually gets mounted to the bumper and then the lights just screw into it uh, it's compared to the traditional style. If you do buy one of these bumper covers, depending on where you get it from, again, there's like four or five different manufacturers that make these things and the style may be different. So if you are concerned this, uh, just something to be aware of. Uh, and again, so this cover is for, is specifically for an 80 to 82. So you will need to source out these plates for whatever reason. Now the uh, aftermarket companies make these steel plates. So if you do go down this road, you need to source out those plates. Uh, I picked those up used. All right, so at this point, we're at the back of the car. The bumper cover has already been removed and that's a piece of it. I've been slowly cutting it up into pieces and throwing it away in my trash over the past couple weeks. But that's the original cover. That's where the damage was. And um, what I actually did to get this cover off is I actually cut it off with a uh, utility knife. And the reason is, is, is uh, if you're ever going down this road, uh, the biggest challenge is getting at all the rusted hardware that's on the, uh, the original mounting rail. And I didn't want to deal with it. So all I did is I just took a utility knife and I basically scored like a, well, I actually cut about an inch away from the lip and basically go, went all the way around. And then I just pulled it off and, and uh, made my life a little bit easier. And then I went after all the rusted hardware and I got all that stuff off. And like I said, one thing to be aware of is that uh, the, um, the taillight mounting system is completely different on an 80 to 82 and compared to a uh, 74 through a 79. So one of the things that you have to do if you want to go down this route is um, it's actually going to be for the benefit during reassembly is um, these taillight uh, mounting housings or brackets or whatever you want to call them, they need to come off. And the main, and the main reason why is um, when you go to install the bumper with the, uh, the lights are already on it, if you leave those housings on, there's no way for the bulb to pass through. Um, so what happens is the uh, the bumper needs to go on without the taillight housings, and then you can actually get the, the bulb installed in the back of the lens, and then you, you'll be fine. So those things need to be removed on both sides, and what's that, what that's gonna do during reassembly, because those taillight uh, housings are no, are no longer there, it's going to give you a better access to actually get up into those, those upper two corners uh, to get at the, the hardware and get that installed. Because honestly, uh, that's one of the biggest challenges with those housings. You really can't get your, your hands in there. 
Um, it's a tight fit, so with those being removed, um, it makes it a little bit easier. I've got the, uh, the mufflers just loose, they're hanging, because um, I, again, to get at the hardware, you just need to get the mufflers swung out of the way. All right, so consideration number two, it's actually regarding the license plate light. The original bumper had the light um, further away from the impact bar, but with the 80 to 82, it actually brings it closer to the impact bar. So what you need to do is, um, if you, you need to notch out a piece of the impact bar, only like a half an inch, because if you don't, the, uh, the, the, the license plate light will actually interfere with the, um, with the impact bar. You won't be able to get the light in there. So all I did is I just took my angle grinder and I just notched out a piece about half an inch long. And let's see if we can see this. All right, that's all I had to do, just notch it out. Not that big of a deal. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually just uh, rebond that so it's nice and solid again. Uh, consideration number three, on my particular bumper, um, there's actually a center tang that provides support um, in the center, obviously, so it doesn't dance around. Um, and what I had to do is I fabricated a bracket. And what I did is I drilled two holes in the, in the impact bar and that bracket is now uh, bolted into the impact bar and is gonna um, provide a mounting location for that bumper cover. So that's number three. And consideration number four, and it really has to do with the bumper rats that are molded into the bumper cover, right? On the car, there's four. There's one on the corner, there's one right there, there's one right there, and then there's another one on the opposite corner. Uh, so again, because of the profile of the bumper cover, uh, the, the, the original bumper rats will interfere with the cover, and it'll actually prevent it from swinging down, so those need to be removed. I was uh, worried about whether or not I was gonna have enough support with a bumper with those things off. And looking at the cover, I'm not concerned uh, because that leaning edge of the, uh, of the impact bar is actually right up against the cover. And the only thing that's really left exposed is the, the bottom six inches of it, um, but, which is basically where the license plate light is. I'm really not too concerned about it. So I'm gonna admit those. Uh, I may come back to them over the winter and see how it goes. So there's really, there's four considerations. Tail lights, tail light, the center tang, and then the, uh, the bumper rats. All right, so we're underneath the car. Video's gonna be shaky, I'm sitting on my back. So, all right, so there's a bracket with the uh, center tang on the bumper attached. So that makes for a good straight, uh, solid point. And then, there is the edge of the bumper resting right up against the impact bar, right? That little rubber coated section that we were talking about before. So that's a, the spot we had to notch for the uh, license plate light. But as you look, it's right up against the bumper. So good solid uh, point there. So now we're looking at the um, back of the uh, tail light lenses or the mounting plates or the backing plates, whatever you wanna call them. So the, uh, the lights are passed through and the, um, so the electrical is passed through the bulbs. And like I've explained before, if you left the, uh, the, uh, the original tail light housings on there or the mounting brackets, you will be able to get them on there. So on, the one on the left is for the reverse, and the one on the right is the uh, the brake light and the turn signal, just to get your sense of uh, direction. And then up top we have the uh, the bumper cover just held in in a couple spots, just so it doesn't fall off. And we also have it mounted in the corner down there as well. So the mufflers are just hanging right now, so they are loose, just to give you a little bit better access to it. I, I also have the horn removed as well, and that's the uh, the horn for the alarm system that will be going on, uh, going back on. Once we're done with paint and everything else, also gives better access to get your hands up there to get the uh, the hardware on once we're at that stage. So, all right, let's get uh, back on the surface and I'll show you the fitment. So looking at the cover, uh, if I didn't mention this before, this is actually a, a, a urethane cover. 
which is actually pretty forgiving as far as when you're working on the alignment and everything else in the fit because it is somewhat flexible and it will allow you to uh, kind of match the uh, the bumper to the car because again these these cars are never perfect from the factory so again this thing is just held on with a couple bolts in the center and one on the left and one on the right and for the most part uh, the the uh, fitment is pretty good again it's just sitting there very loosely but i, I have had it uh cinched up pretty good if i didn't mention it this uh part came from keen corvette parts um but yeah so right now again this thing is pretty loose um but i did mess around with the alignment with all the hardware on and i was able to flex this out and cover up that line but again right now it's just on there for filming and for demonstration so I'm uh, very happy with it. So again, the uh, this is a true 80 to 82 bumper. When uh, that year came out, they actually changed the the uh, the fitment of the tail lights. So technically, you can get these lights to work, but uh, what you may not be able to see on camera is the reverse light actually is canted forward. And the reason why is because uh, of the way the bulb fits in the housing because it comes out at an angle. When you try to put it in there and fit, it actually hits the bumper cover and it won't sit in there uh, perfectly uh, flat. So what we're gonna have to do is, we're gonna have to uh, replace them with some uh, newer tail lights, either from 80, a, a 80 to an 82 or the bubble lights. Um, thinking about doing something else based on some other pictures I've seen online, but we'll see. So at this point, the only thing we really need to do is get it painted. Um, I'm still toying around with painting it here or bringing it down to a shop who's worked on our vehicles before. And uh, they're only about, I don't know, half mile down the road. They do a pretty good work. So I'm actually gonna talk to them over the course of the winter and see uh, what they would do as far as uh, painting it. See, uh, go from there. Um, as far as body work, there are some light scratches on it. Uh, and basically that's just part of, uh, you know, handling it and kind of moving around. I do have to, uh, do a little bit of body work on it. One of the things we have to do is there's actually a, a imperfection on it right here. You probably just fill that with some, uh, finishing putty or something like that. But for the most part, the bumper is in pretty good condition. It's going to require, uh, very little body work to get it prepped. So, but yeah, I figure I would, uh, kind of walk through everybody uh the process on this because you know this is a pretty somewhat normal upgrade to the uh on the stingrays but i from what i can see nobody really talks about as far as what really is required to get these bumpers to fit technically they will bolt on and uh that is correct to a varying sense of degree but Again, depending on the style of the bumper that you get, you may have an easier uh, time uh, installing it, or you may have to do stuff like this. Because uh, again, there are different variants out there, but uh, for the most part, it's really nothing out of the ordinary. Uh, anybody can really do this. So, all right, I hope this helps everybody out. If there's any thoughts, questions, concerns, whatever it may be, go ahead and leave them in the comments box. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And as always, thanks for watching and have a great day. See ya.